is Kane, and I'm here to help you. We're going to take one of these Linksys WRT54G routers, we're going to upgrade it to an open source firmware. We're going to do DDWRT on these because it makes it easier for everybody, and because I know not everybody knows Linux stuff. And we'll go over that later with an open WRT demonstration. Basically, it turns one of these little happy Linksys routers into a enterprise gray like Cisco router. And it's all made by Cisco now, so we'll love it either way. Okay, we're going to go into the supported hardware on the DDWRT website. And we're going to type in what we have. And you can click on any of these. You can find out which ones that actually have the best firmware. Um, I wouldn't recommend getting like the 54G version 6 because it's only got like 2 megs of flash, 8 megs of RAM. It's not very powerful and it's limited what it can do. Notice there's only two firmwares available. Uh, whereas the version 2 has 4 megs of flash, 16 megs of RAM. It can do more, it can handle more, and you can use all these extra firmwares like the VPN and the VoIP. The 54GS uh, is my personal favorite. The version 2 is by far the best one. It's got a 32 megs of RAM and it's got an 8 meg flash. Okay, we've got the WRT54G version 2. This is the one we're going to flash today. So we click here and we've got all of these different firmwares to choose from. We're going to go simple today and we're just going to go with the standard generic. Specifically for this version of the router, it looks like we need to have the a mini build that's required for the initial flashing via the web interface. Again, read the manual, read the instructions. I'm kind of giving you the nice general run over, but each piece of hardware has got its own specific nuances and flaws and tweaks and whatnot. If you have a question about them, again, look them up on the DDWRT's website, drop me an email, I'll see what I can find for you, drop you the proper links. Well, this one here, we have to go through some extra steps. So I went ahead and I downloaded this mini version for required for the initial flashing of the web via the web. And then we're going to go into the DDWRT interface and we're going to upgrade to the new version. Now, unfortunately, we have to use Internet Explorer to do the upgrade on this because Firefox fails miserably. Internet Explorer! Internet Explorer is bad for you. We're going to go ahead and grab the mini generic version. We're going to open this thing up and we're going to hit the upgrade button. This is one of those times where this specific concept of what we're doing was not originally intended by Linksys or Cisco. This will void your warranty. That being said, if it doesn't work, there's workarounds, there's other methods of doing it. Uh, at some point, I may show you guys the TFTP upgrade version. Uh, that's how I had to do it back before we got all the nifty uh, binaries. Upgrade is successful. That's good. Now, this is where they say, wait a while, because your router is going to go through its process, it's going to flash the firmware, it's going to disconnect you, it just disconnected me, and then it's going to reboot the router into the new firmware. There we go. So this is DDWRT. We want to do the upgrade real quick to the new version. Admin is the password. Root is the username. And we're going to do a firmware upgrade. It looks all really snazzy. Cool. We're going to say, we're going to grab the new one, and we're going to hit the Upgrade. Okay, we look here, we've got DDWRT24 version, or version 24-SP2. We did our upgrade from the mini version, so now we actually have the standard generic, and it's got everything you could possibly want on here. We got dynamic DNS, MAC address cloning, advanced running, VLANs, which is something that you normally don't have on these kinds of things. If you're not familiar with VLANs, write me, ask me a question, I will explain how awesome this can be. Uh, it's got so much stuff on here, it's it's just, it's awesome. Uh, and that's just under setup, you got wireless services security, you get into actual SPI firewall, you can get into access restrictions, um, but you can't even set up access restrictions. So if you want to use this in a business and say nobody can access the internet after such and such a day, bam, you know, or you want to cut your kids off. Um, NAT, um, network address translation, and QoS, it's all built in here. This is neat. You can actually see how much the CPU is being taxed, how much memory is available. That's the 16 megs of RAM. All right, now that we've got that stuff done, we can talk about what we can do with this. We can use it for an open VPN client slash server. You can do either end of this. Uh, hook yourself up to your buddies from Timbuktu and basically share your network as if it was a LAN. You can even open this thing up and do routing stuff with uh, RIP via Quagga or even OSPF with, with Zebra. Also, we can do QoS for your games. You can actually tell your mom and your family that, yeah, you can get on the internet and they're going to have a horrible, horrible connection because you're stealing all the bandwidth with quality of service 
for all your gaming stuff. You can also turn these things into wireless bridges. You can set them up with Asterisk, the open source PBX, and take a voice over IP server anywhere in the world with you. I've got this one here. It does just that for me uh, at a later date. Also, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, you can email me, kane at raisetheworld.com, or for that matter, if you have any questions about anything super nerdy that you wouldn't want to send to Logan, because stuff like, you know, Linux, uh, networking stuff in general, DOS-based stuff, servers, wireless hacks, you name it, any of the super crazy stuff that you're like, man, I wonder how that stuff works, drop me an email. <laughs>